Hey, Ron. Hey, Lou. Hey, have you ever been uh, terrified about the future? Slightly. You I should am. be. I am right now. Next up, we have expert predictions about the future that will terrify you. You gotta watch. In to my crystal ball. That can be a pretty frightening experience, you know. While futurists and researchers see plenty of exciting things when they consider what the coming decades or centuries might hold, they also have found plenty of reasons for alarm, from the proliferation of invasive technology to in the increased likelihood of war and a widespread vulnerability to hacking, the future is potentially bleak. Here, according to the experts, are downright terrifying predictions about the future number one. Intelligent robots, Ron. Many technology experts agree that the singularity, the moment when artificial intelligence becomes smarter than humans, and God, it seems like we're there and close, yep. will occur in just a few decades' time. Futurist Ray Kurzweil puts that date at the year 2045. I'm not oh. sure we're going to see that one. Yeah, thankfully, we'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> and that it will be equally as smart as us in just over a decade. It is now! Yeah, it already uh, is. He tells Futurism, 2029 is the consistent data I have predicted for when AI will pass a valid Turing test and therefore achieve human levels of intelligence. Ronnie, what was the story that you were telling me in, in production about your daughter's friend? Yes. So uh, we've everybody's noticed that when you Google something, you say you're Googling, a, you're looking at drones. Mm -hmm. So you Google drones. And the next time you open up Facebook, hmm, suddenly drones pop up. It happens to me on, on Yahoo yes. as well with ads. So, so my daughter's friend was saying that she was thinking about getting some new boots. Wow, what a coincidence, so am I. And the next time she opened a feed, uh -huh. there were boots on it. She didn't even speak about it. How loud. does that happen? Yes. They can't read our mind. Apparently they can. What are they doing, scanners from satellites? <laughs> what the hell is going on yeah. with this crazy ass Frightening, world? terrifying. All right, next up. Okay, this one is kind of along the same lines, uh -huh. but it's better than human robots. Ooh, yeah. I think I know where this is Yeah, going. we could both be replaced. Oh, we already have it. <laughs> a more immediate concern will be that uh, greater, uh, in the decades come, that greater robots are on the horizon. Uh, entire industries, as uh, artificial intelligence, makes people obsolete. It does. ruh -roh. Uh If we do not promptly... Uh, oh, if we do not act properly in anticipation of job disruption, we could experience a social catastrophe on the scale not seen since the Great Depression. I'm not even sure what was so great about that. Yeah, I don't know why they called it that. Yeah, it was awful. The awful depression is what they mm -hmm. should have called it. Um, governments could be caught out of the pace and scale of automation through robotics and AI to such an extent that a sudden surge in unemployment leaves significant numbers of people without work and without the funds to provide for their families. I.e. McDonald's kiosks. Perfect example. It started with ATMs and banks. Oh, that's that's where it all began. Boy. You know, and that's how we got used to punching in numbers, and that's how we got used to having um, passwords. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I remember going to the bank when I was a kid be like a dozen tellers oh sure now my bank has maybe two yeah and i very rarely go inside i i can't remember the last oh no i do it was about two years ago uh next up on our list of things that will terrify you these are predictions my friends things that are going to happen well we'll see next up degradation of the free press it's going on now it's already happening Around the world, the media is already being suppressed in both democratic nations and single-party states. This process could continue as autocratic political leaders seek to crush anyone painting a negative picture of government and political decision-making. 
a free fourth estate could become the exception rather than the norm within five years. Wow. Yeah. You know, I remember one time you made mention of the word talking heads. That's kind of what we do here. Right. Well, you know, it won't be long before you're getting news from a robot. Max Headroom, remember? Yeah, him? <laughs> it, that is possible. Yeah. And, you know, the, the problem is that back in the day, Walter Cronkite gave you the straight up news. Yep. No leaning to the left, no leaning to the right. And he was, in my humble opinion, the world's most respected news journalist. Yep. No doubt about it. He didn't skew liberal. He didn't skew conservative. He just gave it to you straight. Now that, my friends, is really what's caused the destruction of our media right there. It's trying to categorize everybody. You can't do that. Well, and the other thing that uh, the news stations do is they will sensationalize something. Oh, God, yes. And even to the point of misrepresenting the story to get you to hang on mm -hmm. it's you know hey if we can get them through two more segments uh we got them till the very end so they save their most sensationalized headlines for the very end and then you're like well that was nothing at all the way they led up to it one more note about that um when it comes to the separation between conservative and liberal broadcasting, be it Fox or CNN, whatever the case may be, what you're getting right now is being sold to you. And here's what I mean exactly. If you believe that television news stations are there for the purpose of giving you the news you need, I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you. They are there to sell commercials. Right. Please understand that. Yep. The same holds true for any form of media, including print. And you've seen what's happened to print. It's gone away now because no one needs that. Have you gotten a call from the Sacramento Bee, which is our paper here in town, asking you to subscribe? Have you gotten one of those lately? Yep. Why would I do that? I yep. Why? And it's wasting paper. Yeah. And the Bee is awful. The Bee used to be... Well, and it's always been that the B was kind of a Democratic paper, and the Union, remember the Sacramento of Union, course, yeah. was the more Republican, mm -hmm. the more conservative stance. Right. But even then, they both used the same stories from AP in many cases, mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't really, back, I used to deliver the B, they didn't really change them up from the AP story. Now they take them, and they change them, and they put, spin. Their, they put their own spin on it. So it is, it's awful, It's and it's only going to get worse. All right, next up, election rigging. Ooh, mm. Does that happen, Ron? No, it's never happened. No, of course not. This yeah. is America. As technology has made voting easier in some parts of the world, it's also made it uh, the voting systems more vulnerable to attacks. And these threats are only likely to grow, as we've seen in efforts from Russia in the United States last two elections. And who's to say the United States doesn't do it to Russia? Uh, that's true. Uh, there's very little that Russia's doing to us that we haven't done to them first. So hacking an election in terms of changing actual votes is extremely risky for a nation uh, state to do against, or for a nation state to do against the United States, as it could lead to war. But for terrorists uh, and other organized crime groups, the risk may be worth it. So I, I mean, wow, it is. It certainly. And, and part of it is this last election really caught so many people off guard. Uh, I I had to laugh when I'm watching CNN and they're broadcasting the their prediction uh, their predictions, yeah. and they're saying, "Well, Hillary should carry this and do that, mm -hmm. and she only needs this many more electoral college votes." And like two hours later, they're all Whoops. sitting in stunned silence as they were 100% wrong. Predictions, And I think part of that is that conservatives are less likely to give you their exit poll results. Oh, when you're walking out of the booth? Right. And so it's hard to get a grasp of 
you know exactly what's going to happen. But Whoa, boy, sorry. they had a they had a wake up call. My feeling is that we should be able to vote online. But here's the thing: the reason why government officials, they, again, my opinion, but that's what this show is. It's our opinion. What's going on is the government knows that if we vote online, there is a possibility that it could be hacked. Yeah. Do you know how they know that? Because they know how to do it. Right. And they have many people much, much smarter than you and I, Ronnie. That's hard to believe. I know, but true. And they're working on these ways to find out how to hack the system. And this in advance is, is in advance of the possibility of voting online. Yep. I don't know how we could do it. We do everything else that way. Think about it. Go to DMV. I haven't been to DMV in forever. Fishing license. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we can handle that. We can handle all that stuff, but we can't handle voting online because they're afraid we're going to get hacked. Well, it's because nobody buys more than one fishing license. True. And nobody's going to register their car more than once. That's right. <laughs> so That's right. Uh, it's all a little, right. little different. We're talking about predictions that should terrify you. And on our list next is automated warfare. And I remember thinking about this as a kid. Yeah. While reducing the need for soldiers to personally enter combat zones offers plenty of life-saving benefits, the flip side he is described a future where AI military weaponry systems can decide unassisted when to take a human life. The author of a book called Army of None, Paul Scharr, says the idea of automated warfare is, in fact, inevitable. He suggests there is little we can do to curb advancement of artificial intelligence and defense. So, we must promptly start to understand it. And what he's suggesting is, believe it or not, we need to wrap our arms around this idea and deal with the serious ethical and legal implications it carries for the future. Now, God knows, I don't want my kids ever going to war. Right. I think they're getting to the age now where that's probably not even a consideration. But the point is, we could actually have robots, as in the Terminator, yep. fighting wars for us so as to avoid loss of life. Yep. Well, and they already have, and I'm not sure if they're actually in use yet. I tend to think they're not. But they are working on weapons that use smart ammunition. So if you're hiding behind, say, a concrete wall, it will penetrate, pull, the, wall. penetrate the wall before it, you know, sends out its projectiles to kill who's ever beside or inside that. Wow. So it is getting more and more selective, but, you know, in any room with one terrorist, there could be, you know, five children and, you know, two wives or whatever. Yeah. So it's, it really And is. you know those terrorists are surrounding themselves with innocent people. Absolutely. Yeah, that's how they do. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this next one, super topical. Mass environmental migration. Wow. So we are seeing this right now on full display. Yeah, Tijuana. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's real. This is real. Um, and we've yet to see the worst of it. The recent controversy was kind of forwarded by this new, uh, all the Central Americans working their way up towards the United States. And it's the sort of thing that's poised to become the new normal, according to Frank Fetma. Uh, it's it's the future and it's rapidly arriving. You know they're knocking on the door right now, Ronnie. They they are. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I don't know. And they're, you know, again, you see whatever the media wants you to see. But I recently saw a woman holding, and the, the Mexican people don't they don't want them. They don't. They don't. Why do you think that is? Yeah, they don't want them because they're awful people. They're they're the same thing that. Uh, a lot of the Mexican people are sending us all is, is the people that they don't want. Hey, I don't know if you've ever been to Tijuana. Several times. I have too. Yeah. <laughs> Those people are calling these people terrible. Yeah. I thought Tijuana was bad. Yeah. 
Now, Tijuana is Tijuana is a blast, but get out of there before dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, don't do anything stupid. Don't get so drunk that you can't that you don't know what you're doing. The future is terrifying. Yeah. Digital Big Brother, Ron. Uh oh. As AI becomes increasingly sophisticated, it's just amazing what I see. Who would have ever thought when we were kids back in 1964 that this would turn into what it is? Uh, we will inevitably start to see applications in the security domain developed without programming by humans, according to the Fast Future team. Whilst not quite to the level of Skynet, which you always refer to, <laughs> yes. at the heart of the Terminator movie franchise, <laughs> the machines promise to be far more sophisticated in their approach than humans and to develop more complex algorithms. The world is all about algorithms. I remember hearing that back in sixth grade yep. and thinking, algorithms? <laughs> Why the hell do I need to know that? Wasn't he vice president? Yes, he one? was. He invented the internet. <laughs> we don't make stuff up here. I should make that clear. We don't make stuff up. This is all based on fact. Fact. <laughs> Little fiction. Uh, anyway, they expect that the surveillance, surveillance and control of these bots that they'll have over our lives could increasingly infringe on our freedoms, giving a sense that robot overlords are watching us. That is mm. truly Big Brother right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And you see it every day. I saw it six times on the way to your house this morning. It's called Traffic Camera. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, you know, I just read an article. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> I just read an article that there is a city somewhere near Pittsburgh, I think, where the cameras take a picture of every car that goes by to see if you're on your phone. Oh, wow. What do you think about that? Damn. You talk about Big Brother watching? Ooh. Now, me, I, I, you know, I, every week on my radio show, at some point or another... I'm cursing people that text on their phone right. or talk on their phone. I can honestly sit here and say I don't do it. In California, it's even illegal to hold your phone in, your hand, in your hand while you're driving. Right. Cannot do it. No. And yet, I would say 10% of the people, if if not more, oh. have the phone in their hand when they're driving. And I don't mean to go off topic here, but you know what I've been seeing a lot lately? And it's because I work in kind of an industrial area of Woodland, California truck drivers on their phone oh boy driving those big 18 wheelers that's like right. this with the phone in their hand what the hell so i have to i have to throw this out there one day i was working patrol and i saw a guy using his cell phone but he was like this He's oh driving. yeah that's not distracting ron it's hands-free though yeah true i there was nothing i could not write him a ticket for it because he technically was hands-free so and i'd have pulled him over anyway how are you going to hang it up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drop it. Here you go. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> All right. Um, this next one. And this is fairly relevant also. Hijack cities. Uh, so recently, the city of Atlanta, their, their whole uh, inner infrastructure was hijacked. And it cost them $2.6 million in emergency funds to get everything up and rolling again. So with the advent of all these uh, kids that know how to hack into everything, this is what we're seeing. We can expect to see more attacks like this coming in the future, uh, particularly as city and county governments run a number of critical services, which are often insecure and increasingly connected to the Internet. You got what you wanted. Uh, I mean, if you want to, yeah, people want to connect, be able to, to talk to their city and county governments. So it's kind of wide open. Uh, you leave it wide open, and someone's going to mess with it. And, you know, what is their goal? Disruption? Well, uh, uh, a lot of times there's uh, ransomware that goes along with it. So they're hoping that the city will, you know, pay a million dollars. Well, in this case, they spent $2.6 to get everything to, fixed. To fix it. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, you can't, once you pay a terrorist then you're set for life. You're you're always going to be a target. So. Yeah, yep. continually. Yep. Our terrifying predictions next up is medical device hacks. Murder and manslaughter via hacking is also increasingly realistic over the next few years, particularly due to the ongoing vulnerability in implanted medical devices and other critical health care devices. We have already seen researchers demonstrate attacks on insulin pumps. My God. 
<laughs> pacemakers, I was just thinking that, yep. and other critical devices. These attacks become more realistic in the next few years as the exploits become more widely known and shared. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to having a chip in our arm. It's that, it's that close. Yep. You know, probably, again, not in our lifetime, and we'll miss you, but <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. I'm personally, I'm in favor of, like, when you chip a dog, I think that, yeah, you should chip humans, and they should emit a, an RFID or something, and then be unbelievably easy to solve crimes. Where did this crime occur? Right here. Okay, let's look at the six humans that were in the area when this crime occurred. Interview them. There's our guilty person. You had to go all along. Uh, I love, I, I can't wait for that day. Uh, okay, this next one, rising sea levels. Uh, as the majority of the scientific community has pointed out, at the rate we're going, climate change will cause sea levels to rise at an increasing rate, devastating habitats, flooding hundreds of millions of people in coastal areas, and creating a wide range of collateral destruction. Uh, more extreme estimates suggest, for example, that London could be submerged by the year 2100. Oh, crap. I got a lunch schedule. <laughs> All right, not funny. <laughs> I think it just puts the ocean a little bit closer to us and <laughs> screw them people that live on the beach. <laughs> so you're going all real estate. Yeah. Okay. You've had, you've had your shot. <laughs> and finally today on our list of terrifying predictions for the future. Oh, this one does. Car takeovers. Just as hackers can take over a city or a medical device, the more connected our cars get, the more vulnerable they are to tampering by malevolent forces. In the next few years, uh, as more cars incorporate advanced features and greater internet connectivity, which is one of the things that most people today are looking for when they buy a new car, right. the connectivity. Yep. So, um, the, again, you want it. Double-edged sword. Exactly. Yep. You want it, but you're leaving the door open behind you. Yep. So what's the answer? I don't know. Blow up the world? No. Probably not. <laughs> It'll probably do that by itself. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, there you go. Some predictions, Ron, yeah. of what the future may hold. These are scary because I've had a fear since I was a kid of being terrified. Really? A fear of being terrified, you yes. say? Yes. So, since when you were a kid? Since, since I was a little kid. Was it, uh, what about your childhood? Uh, yes. I had that a, too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a fear of being scared? Uh, I am right now. Yeah, you should be because we're <laughs> off topic again. All right. Thank you very much for watching our show today. We sure do appreciate it. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell. You'll get notifications that way each time a new episode comes out. Uh, we'd love to have your comments. You can do that below as well. And uh, we respond to each and every one of them. Right? All of them. Uh, and and uh, you can email us as well. Here are our emails. I'll run that across the screen so that you can get a look at those. Um, anything else I need to talk about? Oh, uh, please, if you are in need of goods or services, uh, we hope that you'll use sponsors. our sponsors. Thank you to Trico Welding Supplies. we got the best sponsors. Thank you to Capital Mobile Break, and thank you to ANC Marine. Also, beforeitsnews.com. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye.